So I can't wait to talk about this. And I do have to say, um, if you if you're listening on the phone or you're really focusing on, gosh, why they why they start late? Why does audio matter so much? I just listened to two seasons of Arranger during my drive, not looking at a video, but just absorbing those words. And uh, your Arranger, Jim, is what made those two seasons happen. The fact that you can sort and you can say, you know, sound matters or, or audio quality matters and be picky about that. A little bit of that is, is certainly your maximizer, but it was great Arranger on display. So today I'm thrilled to talk about this theme. Um, you'll want to make sure and download our companion guide because that will help you really understand the flow of our, 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 uh, our webcast today. Arranger is an executing domain. Uh, that is really what we're going through right now. Um, if you're trying to figure out what order we're, we're broadcasting these in, it is alphabetical by domain. So those, those themes within that executing domain mean that if you're leading with these themes, you're leading by rolling up your sleeves and doing. There's an element of completion to all of these. With Arranger, that completion comes out of configuration in order to get toward complete. Um, the companion guide, my favorite thing about it is actually what we give you at the very top, which is the long definition. That, that full definition, I think, tells you quite a bit. Um, I'm just going to give you a couple highlights about Arranger. People with high arranger tend to be conductors, those people who can sort through the clutter, um, turn chaos into order. It, for, for people with high arranger, it is about trying to find the best way to get things done. Um, other people who may not have a ranger are completely in awe of that. Uh, it is, I think, a lot of pathways in your brain about configuring, ordering, being brave enough to make any necessary change in the moment. Um, but it is it, it is really rooted in logic. Let's not forget that it is a, a doing theme. It's an executing theme. So um, in season one, Kurt Liesfeld actually talks about the difference between strategic and a ranger. I think they can mimic each other quite a bit. The strategic theme is more about thinking about possibilities and creative options, whereas a ranger is a little bit more boots on the ground, a little bit more how do we sort through the most efficient um, actual black and white logistics. Uh, a ranger is about effective flexibility. So it's not just about reacting to change, but it really uh, absorbing change, owning it, and then coming up with a plan that helps us move forward through change. Uh, there is a sense of a, a drive to accomplish within a ranger. Um, I, I don't have high arranger, and, and I'll be totally honest, Jim is my favorite arranger, and I learn so much from you, and I can see when there's a bunch of balls in the air, or there's a bunch of tasks happening, or um, a bunch of things that all need to happen at the same time, people without a ranger, like me, would call those conflicting priorities or, or competing priorities. What I've noticed about leaders with a ranger is those actually become attractive priorities. It is about um, managing and interacting with all of those options in the best way that we can all move forward. Very often, um, arrangers can make great leaders because they can use this almost as a relationship building tool, being able to uh, think about where is the best seat on the bus for everybody on our team in order for them to thrive. There is that almost like a, a watchmaker or, or a clockmaker, being able to understand where people will really um, be positioned best for the whole team to tick and move forward. Uh, people with higher ranger are really at their best in dynamic situations where things are changing. Changing. Uh, depending on your other themes, that could mean where things are unexpected, or it could just mean where where your clients' needs continually change, and perhaps they're more a little bit more uh, predictable. Uh, people with higher range are not uh, typically afraid of jumping into something that other people might see as being confusing, because they're attracted to devising new options, looking for paths of least resistance, and in many cases, even looking for great partnerships that can that can help everybody move forward. The fact that it's in the executing domain is how I compare and contrast it to many other themes. You may have, um, you may not have a ranger and you might be thinking, well, that really sounds like me. Um, I think that what, what makes it different than something like deliberative or uh, maximizer or even adaptability is that drive to complete. Um, and it's a very, it's a very serious, I think, zone that an arranger gets in when they're able to uh, really interact with all those um, components to, to juggle a bunch of things and to really come up with the best configuration. 
Um, how does this theme present itself in leaders? I think as an individual contributor, a ranger is about the, the healthiest way forward for you to manage your busy day. As a leader, it might be more uh, not about the task, but about the team. How can, instead of seeing um, tasks on their list, how can that be seen through people? So how can you think about how do I present or position the, the, the individual and very different talents of those folks on my team in order to move toward one task or even in order to move toward lots of tasks? Um, it, different than adaptability, where adaptability responds to change, a ranger manages necessary change. And when it's at its very best, I think a ranger can sort. And maybe that even requires some other themes or some great partnership to really prioritize what change is the most necessary to make. Um, so it's about being involved in the strategy, the plan, um, being involved from an angle of flexible detail. Um, I think that arrangers aren't afraid of details, but they, um, they, they see not just the, uh, the nugget of the detail, but the transition between that. So different than perhaps adaptability, where it is looking at the proof, the data, the facts, a ranger wants to look at the connections between those facts and how does the engine move forward. Uh, a great leadership extension of a ranger is to remain focused on deliverables so that you can then prioritize those areas that could could use a little reconfiguration, a little redesign, uh, perhaps what's what's most hungry for improvement around efficiency. I imagine a great ringleader of a circus um, who helps the players figure out how they can hum best together. One of the uh, more important things that a leader with a ranger might want to think about is clearly communicating your best way of building a team. It's going to be through trust, through relationship, and, and also based on results. So not seeing trust and relationship as different than results. I think there is quite an element of relationship building within a ranger, um, and, and you deliver upon that trust uh, by thinking about those deliverables, thinking about what needs to be completed. We also, if you take a look at the bottom of that first page of our companion guide, that's mirroring Gallup's research into followership. What we find is there are four different elements of willing followership. What do people say um, compels them to follow important leaders in their lives? Those are trust, compassion, stability, and hope. You may uh, define these using other words, but we find that uh, really those, um, those, those core principles of these four are um, it, something important for all leaders to give, regardless of whether they lead through executing, through relationship building, through strategic thinking, or through influencing. Um, and we have a couple ideas. This is actually um, started, uh, I, I didn't completely take this out of the Strength Space Leadership book, but there's a lot of it in there. Uh, a little bit also is, is my experience in coaching and my experience with a ranger. Um, but how might a leader with this theme build trust? I think that is one of the most important themes often that leaders uh, speak with me about in coaching conversations. And, and my thought around that is, uh, how can you practice speaking what truth you're seeing? Uh, I, I remember co-leading with one of my favorite uh, teaching partners, Bruce Young. Bruce and I were teaching a strengths course. Um, we showed up in uh, a room that neither of us had ever been in, and we were trusting what the caterer had set up in terms of tables in order to be the best facilitation for the room. I have high woo, high adaptability, high positivity. I tend to just take what's given to me and create a better alternative through my presence. His arranger um, served us so much better than my approach alone. It was he could see that these chairs could be arranged in a better way. He could see that our, um, our breakout for coffee was in a place that wouldn't allow people to talk to each other very easily. Um, and I could tell something was bothering him. And the moment when he just said, here's my observation. I think that was a powerful trust building moment. It certainly made me want to trust his arranger a little bit more. Um, there's other, there's also, I think, a piece about a ranger and any strength of realizing not everybody sees the truth that you're seeing. Uh, trust yourself and your own ability to understand a reconfiguration. That might be something as simple as chairs and, and coffee. It might be something a little bit more um, complicated, a little bit less easy to see. It might be about you know, human talent uh, or relationships, but trust your ability, I think, first to, to know that you can see a better way or that, or that you can tap into other people who can see a better way. 
and then allow people into to what that really is. Um, in many leaders, a ranger means that they can build trust by giving and receiving honest feedback mid course. So um, different than responsibility where responsibility really wants to hold on until the commitment has been fulfilled. A ranger oftentimes might be that nagging voice that says, hey, this commitment was important at the time and now we need to go a different direction. So finding the best voice to give and receive that honest mid-course feedback, I think is a great uh, way to, tr to, to flex the trust muscle uh, of higher rangers. When we talk about compassion, think about a, um, aiming a ranger at what's best for others. Invest time in considering uh, how you might people how, how you might help people develop, how you might position them for success, and what you realize perhaps might be um, a good fit for them. Um, when we think about stability, I think very often in that moment, a ranger goes pretty quickly through the the hint that something could be better to the answer for what better looks like. But communicating through that entire process from, from the hint to the solution can throw people off. So um, as much as possible, keep the confusion away from others. Communicate the, the alternatives and the alterations after you've decided on which one is the best. It's not always necessary to, to take people into that thought process. Sometimes it's better um, to, to really help them see, here's what the alternatives look like. Um, and finally, when we talk about hope, I think a ranger has a really important place to help release people from commitments that maybe aren't the best for them. Um, I've spoken with, with managers of teams who are bold enough to say, you don't have to accomplish the same things that your peers are accomplishing in order to be recognized. Um, and that kind of reconfiguration, that redefining what work and what deliverables can look like so that you're helping people commit to the most important items for them and for the team, I think um, is something that absolutely builds all four of these, but, but that I would pin on hope.